Listen to the Tommy Schnermecker Show live weekdays 9 to noon on CJAD 800 and CJAD.com. Some people can stay in the same job for years and years, but as time goes by, you have to ask yourself, am I still useful to my company or am I in danger of becoming unnecessary? Here to help you make sure you don't become redundant in your job is Tracy Weiland, an expert on the impact of technology on society, work and careers. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Thank you for having me. Tracy, what's the key to staying relevant at work? So if you're working in a company, I came up with a couple of trends that I think will help employees realize that we've shifted from the classical world to the digital world. And the first one is realize today that loyalty is appreciated, but contribution is key. So the whole concept of becoming an entrepreneurial employee, I think, is important for people to start to think about in their jobs today. Tell me, what do you mean by entrepreneurial employee? So what I mean is when you approach your job, you almost have to approach it like you're the CEO of the company. You're the CEO of your career. You're the CEO of your job. So if you're in sales, you look at it and say, how can I expand the customer base? How can I increase sales? And how can I measure that in a quantifiable figure? Or if I'm in manufacturing, how do I reduce error ratios or streamline processes or build the team? Or if you're in customer service, How do I improve the ratings today or reduce the callbacks? So those are just ways that – and the reason is, Tommy, is that companies are looking for leaders at younger levels. In the past, you had to wait till you're 40 or 50 to be groomed to be a leader, and now firms realize we have to get the pipeline started sooner than later. Now, is being relevant, what you suggested, having this entrepreneurial approach as an employee, is this uh, for older workers only, or if you're still young, how would it apply to you? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think it's for all workers. It's just the shift, right? The world has become much more competitive, much more um, global, so there's, you know, all, you know, more reasons to be able to think about job opportunities and expansion in your own firm. Young people, I think you need to think about are there lateral moves that you could make, cross-functional teams that you can join, special projects that you can get on board with. And for more groomed or seasoned people, um, you know, where are some other opportunities in the firm? Maybe you've become a specialist. Now can you build your skills in technology or another specialty area so that you can increase your value right there on the job? How do you make sure your boss realizes what you're doing or and is aware of what you're doing? You know, it's a good question, and I tell people, keep metrics on yourself. Every day, write down one thing that you've done for the firm your, or your department or your job and quantify it. Quantify it so that if you have a performance review once a year, you can sit down with your metrics and have a dialogue and say, here's what I've been doing. Now, hopefully you're meeting with your manager, your boss, more than once a year. But sadly, I hear that often it's just that one meeting. So that means you need to think about how to make this easy for your manager to say, wow, you've been doing a lot, and I didn't even know that, but thank you for bringing it to my attention. Surely we can do something for you. What tips uh, do you have uh, for someone who's listening uh, right now who might be afraid they're already irrelevant and they could be on the chopping block. Uh, uh, can they do anything? Well, the first thing you do if you think you're on the chopping block is, is gener- get your networks going right away. Um, and I think people should constantly think about networking regardless and not wait to the last minute. Number two is if you really think that you're going to be transitioned, I would look for companies in the same or similar industry, right? Where can you transition quickly? So if you're in automotive, Look at automotive firms uh, or look at, you know, adjacent fields like, you know, auto tires or engines or services um, and, I, and look at the same functional area. So if you are in HR, look for HR in the same kind of industry because those people will be the fastest to hire you because you're bringing experience skills right away to the job day one. Tracy Weiland, my guest, uh, tell me, what's a career selfie? <laughs> You know, I saw a statistic about two weeks ago, published by Google, actually, that Americans and actually anyone who owns an Android, not just Americans, take 93 million selfies per day. 
and look at their androids over a billion times per day. And I said, that's an inordinate amount of time that we're looking at our images. What if we put that amount of time into looking at our job or careers? And so I looked at another statistic that said that people in general only spend about an hour and a half a year on their own personal career development. So something seemed wow. wrong there. Yeah. So, you know, it's a digital world. I think technology is exciting. I'll be the first to tell you all about technology and its benefits. But I also know that we are living much longer and working much longer, and we need to start paying attention to our careers. So how do you incorporate this technology into paying attention to your career? Well, one, you know, I, I think you do need to realize that we've shifted now from the classical world, the, the qualitative world to the quantitative world to the digital world. We have over, you know, there are millions of openings, particularly in the tech sector, right? So we need to figure out in our current jobs if we can start to boost up our technology skills. So if you are in manufacturing, well, what about learning about robotics or 3D printing? Or if you are in marketing, what about digital marketing, mobile marketing, and social media marketing? This is all happening today. And firms, I would say, would really love to see more employees raise their hands for these skill-building projects or opportunities because they want to expand using, using technology, too. This texter wants to know, how can I effectively ask for a raise? I've been laterally promoted twice in the last year and a half. A lot more responsibility and project management with no pay increase. Okay, so number one, um, the candidate needs to understand their worth, right? So it's important to, and you can do this by looking at salary surveys, talking to HR if you have bands, talking to recruiters, and looking on those um, like payscale.com, glassdoor.com. Really understand your job at your skills experience and what it is that is worth today. Then figure out are you pay, getting paid the same, more, or less. If you are getting paid less, then I would suggest having a salary leveling discussion with your manager. It's very soft approach saying, you know, I was looking at my salary com- and my responsibilities compared to my peers inside the firm and outside the firm. And, you know, I really love working here. I've done all of these contributions, but I I think I might need um, an adjustment in my salary. Can you help me with that? And then I would make sure I'm very prepared and have all of the quantifiable metrics I just talked about to show that promoting you must have been an oversight, and we need to get that adjusted. Let's talk about some examples of those quantifiable metrics. What would you be quantifying? Okay, so depending on, you know, what functional area you are in, um, let's just piece it apart. So sales is pretty easy. It's a lot of sales is based on quota and commission. So did you increase sales? Did you improve, right, you meet your quota? Did you exceed your quota? Did you open up new accounts? I actually think that's a very good metric for salespeople to, to uh, you know, track for themselves because new business is really difficult and important in a competitive world. So I think sales is pretty black and white. Then let's go to manufacturing. Manufacturing is something that you can track. Error ratios, if you look at the metrics that your firm keeps on each functional area, that's what you measure yourself to. HR, it might be lawsuits or it might be reduced customer complaints. It just depends on what your company is measuring. Customer service. You know, number of calls, number of good calls, number of bad calls, mm-hmm. call reduction. So there's, you have to look at the metrics that the company is measuring and then match your metrics to that. Your questions for Tracy Weiland. Text your question to 514-800. You can call us, 514-790-0800. Our conversation with Tracy Weiland, an expert on the impact of technology on society, work, and careers. Tracy, who are the people that will be left behind in the workplace of the future? You know, Tommy, that that is a good question. I think it's a couple of factors here. One is people who... Um, you know, view that longevity ensures promotion. I think that that's a myth today. Um, the tap on the shoulder, so to speak, is, is over. Companies are really looking for, yes, people who stay in the firm, but also people who are constantly contributing and adding value to the firm. Um, number two is I, I think people need to take the onus of their own career and become marketable employees. That is, if you walked into an elevator 
and the CEO of the firm hops in with you and you have five floors up and she says to you, what do you do? Do you have an answer in a quantifiable types of terms? You know, I am the head of marketing. I've increased sales for this firm and our market brand by X, Y, and Z. Because her second question will probably be, and where do you see yourself at this firm in two to five years? And you will want to be able to have an answer for that. So I think people who continually think about what they're contributing as well as where they want to go have a step up on people who who don't. So I think those are a couple of things to think about. I'm a big fan of technology skills. You know, I saw a statistic that by 2020, over 70% of the jobs will have a technology component. I see the skills, you know, the skill gaps and the shortages in jobs today where I am in Silicon Valley. I think it's a no-brainer for people to start thinking about how to add some tech to their jobs so that they can continue to be relevant. Now, companies understand the importance of branding. Uh, What is uh, your take, Tracy, on personal branding? I think that companies are starting to see, and I'll give you a quick example of a hotel, that the employee brand is their brand. It used to be that making your manager look good to their boss would keep you, you know, secure. But today is think about when you walk into a hotel. The first person you meet is not the general manager. You might meet the bellboy. You might meet the concierge or the front desk. Your impression of that hotel is based on your impression of that person. So firms are realizing the person who answers the call center, the person who writes back to you in a chat message, employees are the touch points of the firm and represent the brand. So it's very important to have a positive self-brand. This uh, texter wants to know, what about service technicians? How can I move up to management, a company based in Toronto? Well, number one, I would find out, you know, sit down with your manager in HR. I don't think that people realize that, you know, they they should be dialoguing with their managers. Companies often publish criteria either on their internal website um, or in job descriptions on what is the criteria to, to move from here to the next level or the next opportunity. And make a pact. You know, the, the company is not your family anymore. It really should be your team member. You're working for them, and they're providing you with money and benefits. And then in exchange is, you know, you're gaining experience, and you want to be able to move ahead. So, I, you know, I personally think that there's probably information right on your internal website or in your HR department on how to move to the next level. And it probably will include experience, education, Um, and different kinds of skill sets that they would like to see you exhibit so that you can move. And sometimes it's just raising your hand saying, I want to move. I'm ready for the move. How do I get there? What about having a great idea for getting the company to make a lot more money? An interesting suggestion, a great suggestion. What's the best way to present it? We'll have the answer to that next. Coming up tomorrow, how Canada is teaching the world to police itself. Right now, our conversation with Tracy Weiland, an expert on the impact of technology on society, work, and careers. If you have any questions, uh, text your question to 514-800. First of all, what's the name of that hotel where the employees are are the brand? Oh, it's, it's, it's most hotels. Uh, I don't think there's a hotel that doesn't have an interest in having employees as positive brands. Um, you know, globally, I have met so many hotel owners and operators who said that employees are, are the focal point. What's the best way, someone who has a wonderful uh, idea for how to improve profits for the company, what's the Excellent. best way to present that idea? Yeah, excellent question. I, as an executive, lo- loved when employees would come to me and say, I have a great idea on how we can increase money, and I'd say, what's your plan? So before you go in with your great idea, number one, make sure you do have a plan. That means you've researched it, you've prepared, you've analyzed it, you've assessed the marketplace, you know, what are competition doing it, and come in with at least a, like a mini business plan so that when you say, I have a great idea, and your manager says, Okay, that's great. How? Why? Because nobody wants to have an idea thrown at them and don't make it my problem. You come in and show me that you have a great idea and I might empower you to go execute on that great idea. Part two is you got to understand the culture of your firm. Different firms have different ways that you socialize the ideas, right? So always being prepared is key. 
There are firms that love people just to stand up and say, I have an idea and let's run with it no matter what. Other companies have process of protocols that they like you to socialize at first with your manager because they may be more seasoned than you. You have to understand the culture of your firm for the process part, but the preparation doesn't change. What about the employee who's worried that he's not going to get credit for the idea? What would you tell that employee? I would document. I think it's important, and thank goodness for technology, because we can document using email. Uh, we can document using a number of different factors that, you know, voicemails, um, different ways that you can document, you know, what you're doing, um, and also uh, meeting notes. So I think it's important that, you know, hopefully there's a better trust factor there, but I can understand that people want to make sure that they do get credit. And they bring it to the attention of whoever um, they feel that they can trust who's above them that they can say, okay, to my manager, hopefully, I've done these different things and this is my idea and here's the documentation in case there's a discrepancy. News Talk Radio, CJAD 800, CJAD.com.